What up, guys? It's Josiah here, and today we are reading The Red Kayak. If you can't tell by this image here, or by the title of the video, um, we're- Okay, this is chapter one. Let's begin. After all this time, I still ask myself, was it my fault? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, I wonder what would have happened if I'd called out a warning, or kept my mouth shut later. Would JT and, and Digger still be my best friends? Would the D'Angelo's still be living next door? One thing's for sure. If none of this had happened, I'd be out there crabbing every day, baiting my pots in the morning, and pulling them in after school. Fall's a great time for catching crabs before the females head south and the males burrow into the mud. I could fix the engine on the boat e easily if I wanted. It's not broken like I told it's it's not broken like I told Dad. Probably nothing but some air in the lines from setting sitting there so long. I could bleed the bleed the engine tonight, set an alarm for four AM and be on the river before the sun was up over the tree line. Don't don't think it didn't bother me. The way those traps sat all summer stacked four four deep against the back of my dad's tool shed. Some never even got hosed off. They were they were stashed in such a hurry, but be a lot of work to clean them up and rezinc rezinc them too, so they didn't corrode. In just a few days, though, I could have four rows of twenty five sunken pots out there, each one marked with a fresh painted orange boy, boy, and one hundred of those pots soaked and baited with razor clams. Afternoons, I could be hauling up in crabs hand over fist right now. A bushel of big number one jimmies would fetch me seventy dollars from the wholesaler, maybe even more since the price of craps has gone through the roof. But this is not what well, this is also complicated. I can't go back out in the water, not yet anyway. I can't help it. I keep asking myself, what if this? What if that? And then my mind, and then in my mind, I see that red kayak. My dad s says, stop thinking, stop thinking that way. You'll be looking backward on the time, Br Brady. You got got to have one heck of a crook in the neck. He smiles when he says that, but I didn't know what he means deep down. But I know what he means deep down, and it's funny. You can't keep dwelling on the past when you can't undo it. You can't make it happen any different than it did. My cousin Carl comes over a lot. He's a paramedic and sees lots of gross stuff, so he knows about getting things out of your head. Talk it out there, boy, he, he keeps telling me. What? You think you're alone? You think other people don't have these feelings? Even Carl admits he's not better been in quite the same position as me. Mom has helped me a lot, too, although I know it was really hard for her because of my sister. Mostly, I wish I could s stop going over it in my mind, but it replay replays all the time, like waves breaking in the narrow beach down at the river. Sometimes after school, I rock, walk down there to sit on the bank and do nothing. Just let the sun bake my face and listen to those waves hitting the shore, one after another. Tilly always follows me, and I let her. Tilly's my yellow lab. She lays down with her head on, on her paws and knows to leave me alone when I'm thinking. Despite everything, I still marvel at how all those tiny ripples in the water can catch the sunlight and make the river shimmer like a million jewels were shown were sewn into the surface. Deceptive how how other times the same water can be as smooth as glass. You'll never know that underneath the currents run so hard and so fast. It's a pretty river, the Corsa, but it doesn't have a heart. Hope you guys enjoy this chapter. If you guys did leave a like, subscribe